Good morning. How are you doing? Welcome to Natasha Makes. I was just finishing off. There we go. Done that now. Um, right. How are you doing? Have you had a nice evening? Have you had a nice day so far? All right, Jen. You're just going to shut the door. Hey, what? 9.59, well, we're making up for our tardiness yesterday. I so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, well, that's weird, isn't it, being early? Uh, not used to that at all. Not used to that at all. I'll have a quick tidy up then, shall I, while we, uh, while we get ourselves all sorted. So today on the show, we've got beautiful fabrics. Um, it's sort of the yin and yang of fabrics, if I'm honest, because we've got for you all of these beautiful fabrics from Moda, they're the Little Duckling collection, which we just fell in love with and went, um, yes, I always wanted one of these. Um, I'm going to be honest, uh, I never knew what day of the week it was, let alone how old my child was. So that never really happened for me. But I really loved the idea of it. And I always used to see on Facebook um, all my friends who were organised and did know what day of the week it was. And they would have their babies in here. And, you know, you'd put a ring or something or highlight somehow, you know, days, weeks, months, years, all of that. And it's just really lovely, really lovely as a, as a memory thing. But what we've done with it, um, and this is a panel that you can buy today, we've backed it in the bamboo toweling. Yes, the bamboo toweling is back. Um, we've got it on order. It is due in today. Um, if you've not used the bamboo toweling before, here it is. It's cashmere feel. It just feels absolutely gorgeous. Um, you will see when you get it, if you um, get it by the half meter, it's folded. There's a fold line on it. It comes away when it's washed. So don't worry about that. Um, I kept looking at it going, is there a fault in this fabric? Is there a fault? It's running all the way down the middle of every single one. It's like, no, washed it and absolutely fine. Um, so don't, just, just because, you know, that's the mistake I made. I like to tell everyone. Um, all my mistakes. I feel like we're sharing. Uh, who have we got with us this morning? We've got Jan, good morning, and Rebecca, good morning, and Jacqueline, good morning, and Tasha, lovely fabrics for little boys and girls. They are, they're very gender neutral. Um, you've got those soft yellows and greys. There's a little bit of blue in there, but it's not, it's not overtly one thing or the other. I just think they're absolutely exquisite. We've got all sorts. So we've got on one side, um, the little ducklings, and then on the other, We've got some brand new Anna Maria Horners. We've done those as mega meters because the scaling on those is huge and they're beautiful. You're going to want to get a lot of that. So um, I'll show you those in just a minute. So let's go back to who we've got this morning and say hello, hello to everyone. Uh, let's just scroll back, scroll back. Good morning, Rona. We're busy cutting your fabrics. It's going to take us a little while, but we'll get there. Uh, morning, Helen. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Myra. Um, hello, mixed girls and guys. They're all in the office planning. So this week is a very, very busy week because I've got seven shows at the craft store on th over Thursday and Friday. Um, but of course, it's the last Friday of the month. So it's our guest designer takeover day here as well on Friday. So Gemma's going to present that here, bless her. Um, and we've got fabulous um, Amanda from the Little Quilt Studio. She's here, Little Quilt Shop, rather. she's here. She's going to be talking about quilting, all those sorts of things. And she's got a beautiful, beautiful Christmas table runner, which you're just going to, it's got tassels a lot. You're going to love it. Um, so that's what's going to be happening here whilst I'm over there. You know, it's busy times, right? Um, and good morning to Claire, good morning Natasha and team, I wish I'd had that when my boys were babies. I know, me too, me too. Um, they were just sort of coming in into fashion, it's like baby showers and things like that, they were just coming into fashion in this country when I had Freddie, um, and then by the time I had low Emily I was too exhausted to do anything anyway. Uh, so <laughs> that went out the window. Morning Joe. now you see Joe. Joe, 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 who's going to have another granddaughter, Joe. Um, this would just be perfect. Couldn't resist the ducks for the new granddaughter. She's going to need them because otherwise, as the second, ask me how I know, you get all the hand-me-downs. It's not, as, it's not, you know, my, um, <coughs> my nanny Mew always used to knit us jumpers for birthdays and Christmas. So um, I always ended up with double because as soon as my brother outgrew his, I would then end up with his jumpers as well. Um, I didn't have a dreadful childhood, by the way. I had a wonderful childhood. So i um, just like to clear that up with a lot of jumpers, hand-knitted by Nanny Mew. Um, morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mark. Oh, yeah, great bamboo toweling. Thank you. Yeah, well, you kept asking for it. 
<laughs> so the other thing to look at is um, the bamboo sort of bathroom collection that we did as well in terms of the pattern so if you want to do the head wraps and the hair wraps and all of that kind of shazam that's all on there good morning Yvonne good morning Colette good morning Joan good morning Sharon good morning um Ali F good morning Natasha and everyone I was on holiday last week and couldn't watch live only catch up but I'm back now lovely fabrics as always you know we try Ali even in your absence <coughs> we try but I've got a bit in the back of my throat this morning Morning, Ali B. <coughs> morning, Ross. Morning, Teresa. Morning, Sue. Um, Gemma is great at presenting. Yes, she is. What a blessing all your staff slash friends are. Do you know what? I am very lucky to call them staff slash friends. I don't really call them staff. They're just friends, really. We just happen to work together. We all have a mutual interest and a mutual love of fabrics. <coughs> it's all pretty good. Works for us. Um, I've never I don't think I've ever worked anywhere else where I sail out the door going, bye everyone, love you. I mean, HR would have me up, wouldn't they, uh, for that? That's not normal. Uh, morning, Tina. Morning, Silk Sparkly. Good morning, Lisa. Um, and Oreo, good morning. And Michelle and Lorraine, good morning. Oh, there you go, Myra's already got the bamboo thing. Um, the bamboo is fab and lovely to work with. It really is, Rona, isn't it? And um, it also makes... <laughs> don't know you know when you start a sentence and you're not quite sure if you should finish it without explaining it quite a lot um it also makes wonderful wipes for lady beards my <laughs> yeah so <laughs> i need to explain that quite quickly don't i uh my otter hound maud has a bit of a drink problem <laughs> Not like gin or whiskey or anything, just water. You know, just she's a hound, just water. Like she's she's not on the hard stuff or anything like that. But <laughs> um, SJ's in the in the office. I don't know she's just going to be like, oh, what is she saying again? Facebook is going to have us up again for words she shouldn't use. <laughs> Soz SJ, um, and uh, yeah. So Maud has a bit of a lady beard situation going on because it's generally wet because she's always puddling about in puddles and water bowls and everything else and then she goes and digs and then it's a muddy lake it just anyway it's a mess but the point i was trying very badly to make is that the bamboo cleans her up a treat yeah uh <coughs> i love the stories you have to, <coughs> to explain <coughs> excuse me <coughs> You know, and you can see the fluff right at the back. So, I'm going to show you some fabrics. I'll do that while my voice gets back to normal. Oh my goodness, eyes running the lot. Anna Maria Horner, Megameters, let's take a look. Here we go. So, <coughs> oh, I'm actually crying. There we go, righty ho. It's a proper caught at the back of my throat job. Alrighty. Oh yeah, here we are. This is just going to make the most amazing border. It's just stunning. Just stunning. <coughs> Get a cough drop. I haven't got a cough drop. I haven't got one. What have I got? Oh, I've got some mints in the car. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, that'll be it. Uh, okay, so there we go. We had to put this with hot tomato. It's social climate. It's beautiful. Helps if I probably get it around the right way. Look at that. We just had to pull that orange. We, um, we pulled these together quite quickly this morning and we're like, normally our half meter heavens take us quite a while. But this morning we we're like, nope, that, that, that. So of course this is folded in half, you get double. So that, you see, I'd be cutting that down there and having this all the way around as a border on something. Now the deal with the mega meters is that we cut these to order. So what does that mean for you? That means that if you buy two, you will get two meters in a continuous length. That's what that means for you. 
here we go this one beautiful had to go with this is the overachiever in burgundy with aqua just ooh, gorgeous these are available now by the way so if this is your first time watching firstly hello i don't normally choke quite like that um but secondly um with the mega meters we do them at a ridiculous price for you it's your way to build your stash um completely and utterly build your stash and um and we do it well these will be 19.99 for two meters of fabric so that's with your uh, your meter of your plane and because we do it as well because it's really hard to color match over a screen and a lot of us are still not going lots of places um, or can't be bothered or whatever it is or just don't like to go out or don't have a shop that's close so we do it for you here um, this is with sage how gorgeous is that again just beautiful and we've done it from quite early on with natasha makes because it just suddenly struck me everyone was stuck at home and not being able to see these things oh this one um You'll be lucky if there's much left of this, actually, because Inga got quite excited with this one and Jane. They're both eyeing it up. Not going to lie. But the pattern repeat is huge on this. So that was why we all sat there and went, that needs to be. That really does need to be huge. And we've put it with spearmint. Yeah. Gorgeous just gorgeous um we've got this in a couple of different colorways as well <clears throat> i just love these and mix and match these through because you'll see the greens and stuff all working so beautifully together um and then oh this one this one now we had a similar one that i did teapot co uh, cozies out of how's that and again, these are your big, your big repeats, but also, you know, English paper piece with this because you've got so many different elements going on. All of them work like that really, really beautifully. We've put that with black just so that, that purple can really sing. There we go. Now then, now then, now then, this is source code. And we have put this source code in spark with chartreuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I always think of you, Claire, whenever I have to say chartreuse. Um, <coughs> there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? And again, you know, you can pick up, like, if you went with that and you also went with that, then you'd have the sage as well. So then you've got, you start to get ombres of colours, which there are in the fabrics as well. So we've really tried to pull together colours that you can mix and match through with if you're buying multiples, because I know what you lot are like. You're not greedy, you just like the lot. And I'm comfortable with that. So how about this one? This is a bit of a stunner too, isn't it? Check that out. <coughs> with your butterflies. There you go. I've got that upside down, haven't I? I've just looked in the screen and gone, um, I think I think I flipped it, but I just wanted to pick up that. Now, just remember, this colour, this apple does not photograph well. So in the photographs, it'll be washed out and it'll be rubbish. But when you get it, it's gorgeous. It's just nothing we can do. The light box has a bit of a hissy fit with certain colours. It just doesn't like them. And unfortunately, that beautiful um, green is one of them. So, yeah, let's just check this out. If you were to go, so, so far, we've got a gorgeous ombre of greens in here, if you're going for various ones. So that's what we try to do, so that there's no jarring. They work. We really do think about this. I promise we do. Um, azalea pink for this one. Just wait till you see. Look, 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 look. How beautiful is that it just picks up whatever those are picks them up there we go beautiful so that is that for the um, mega meters for you and you're not having to wait till midnight or anything they are live already already 
they are live. Um, so do grab those, don't miss out. I've only got a bolt of each of those and that's it. That's it done. What are you saying, Elizabeth? What are you chatting? I can see, I can see an name coming up here. Here we go. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, you got it right the first time. You see, I'm getting better with my chartreuse. Uh, for the newbies, or us, could you, uh, who miss a show, would it be possible to put a ruler on the fabric to get an idea of the size of the print? Um, what on the um. Oh, what are, blah, 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 blah. Um, on the photographs on the website? Ooh, I'll have to see what we can do about that. It's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, I mean, Elizabeth, yeah, she's saying, can you go by the cutting mat, perhaps? Um, but I, I don't know if you mean like on the website when it comes to buying. I don't know. We'll, we'll let, leave it with us. This time next year, you will have Natasha uh, McCarty speaking French. Uh, Myra, uh, mm, I would really love it because I do feel very uncomfortable about the fact I don't speak very good French, uh, slash any. Um, well, I mean, Oué la piscine really is not going to help me buy fabrics from Odile, is it? Let's be honest. Um, and that's about my level. Um, I can't see the first one on the web page, Natasha. Have you run out? We shouldn't have, Ali, we shouldn't have. Oh, on the web page, Myra. Let me look into that. Sometimes, depends how we crop them. Let me think, let me think what we can do um, about it. Not always, yeah. And always, sometimes we don't, you know, we use stock images as well. So, let me, leave it with me, leave it with me. I will squirrel that away. Uh, talking of squirrely, we've got, we've got little charm packs for you. We've got all sorts. I don't know where to start, Steph. I feel a little bit all over the place because um, there's just so many goodies. The Welcome Little One fabrics. Um, like I say, you've got this as a panel. I used, I also did, and this is just to show really how simple it can be. And this will give you an idea of all the fabrics because we've got all of these by the half meter as well. Or if you want the bundle, we've got a 33 piece fat eighth bundle of these, uh, depending on what you are making. But it's just such a beautiful, gentle range. This is just, well, this was the side. I went and got Emily's changing mat and this fits on her changing mat. So it's one, two, three, four, five squares up one two three four five six seven squares along and that will sit oh she's got a plastic changing mat so i always put a blanket or something over the top um and this is fleecy so i've put the blue fleece we've got that that's yeah, like 399 and a half meter like it's not going to break the bank but it gives a lovely backing so all i did was sew those together put the fleece over the top pin it heavily so it doesn't stretch stitch around i left a gap turned it through and then i just stitched around the edge there just to hold it in place all the way around honestly it took me about half an hour to do that was it and it just felt too embarrassingly easy to actually write a pattern up for it because it's just a case of one two three four five by hang on what did i say seven um and that was it and just literally bag it out and then just stitch round that was it but that will go on Emily's changing mat and that is super super soft so you can have that on the floor just throw it on the floor for tummy time or whatever or a changing mat um, or just as a, a quilt to um, to have over the buggy or whatever it is you know even when Emily's in the car she sometimes gets cold feet now because obviously socks and shoes can never stay on but if she just had a little blanket like that over her in the car seat she'd be happy as Larry should be, and also because we drive her to get her off to sleep. That's the other thing that we do. Because I'm not gonna lie, she's an absolute toad to get off to sleep. So actually, that would work really beautifully. But if you want to have a look at these, let's have a look at some of these nice and close up. So, these are the fabrics that you'll get. Look at the little ducks. And like I say, you, you can grab the 33 fat eighth piece. They're really beautiful. But things like this, we've got by the half meter. They're all on the website for you. They're all there. They're 
<coughs> just absolutely gorgeous. Look at these. Gentle, gentle prints. Just beautiful. So they are there with, so <laughs> I tried to get as many different permutations as we possibly could. So um, we've got all of those. That is your fat eighth bundle. So it goes from your blues, your yellows, your greys into lighter greys into your creamy whites. And that's that's got your whole lot in there. Uh, we have also got the charm packs. We've got the mini charm packs. And what I did with my leftover ones of that. Now, do you remember one of the pay it forward projects was um, bibs and then wipes? So just a square of fleece or bamboo toweling. If you've put bamboo toweling on the back <coughs> and then do that. And um, yeah, and then you've got wipes. And you know where I thought you could put said wipes? Do you know, do you know, do you know? Along with nappies or anything like that. You know we did the posh peg bag. There's no reason why you can't do a posh peg bag and pop all your wipes and stuff and your nappies and things like that. You could have nappies one side, wipes the other, and then they're there, ready to go, hanging, beautiful. Um, Jane, uh, when I said to Jane, you know we had those, uh, the frames, we've got 12 by 12 frames. Now, have a look on the website. They're all listed there. Uh, we've got ones that you stick in plant pots. So we've got um, we've got all sorts of exciting ones. Uh, we've got whatever we can. They're quite hard to get hold of. Uh, but I just said to Jane, could you just do me one just to show the frame for those that bought this the other day, that gorgeous frame. Um, and I thought baby showers, they are such a thing, aren't they? So all that is, is some of the, the fabric with just the, the duck with the, the mother duck with the duckling behind. In fact, let me just bring this here for you to see. I pop it down there like that and you'll be able to see which fabrics are which. It's just been framed with the little two and a half inch squares along there and then um, in one of the in one of the greys we just bond a web the back and cut out an applique on the letters um, and then again this fabric just bordered here and the beautiful stripe with the star that one around the edge so I could imagine that with lots of cupcakes and things like that for a for a baby shower or something like that would be gorgeous or maybe you could do something like that um, with you know welcome whatever the baby's name or you know almost like a wall hanging to keep with their weight and the birthday or I don't know anything like that anything like that so what are we then going to do with such things as the little leftover squares? Because there are some. And then it occurred to me that what we should really do with them. So this show is a little bit, a little bit of this and a little bit of that today. Is um, lavender ravioli. Perfect with babies. Um, popping them in their nappy drawer or, um, uh, you know, wh wherever you like. You could hang them in their wardrobes. But... But, but I don't think we've done these for a little while. A lot of you did these last Christmas. But all it takes is, and let's just go overhead for this one, um, is two squares like that. Do a few of these. Emily loves these. She grabs these out of her, um, she grabs them out of her, uh, out of her, 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 her uh, socks and pants drawer and her pajama drawer and she just runs around sniffing them and she thinks they're fab so you don't have to pink these because they're already pinked we've got the lavender this is gorgeous lavender this is actually from yorkshire this lavender and it just smells gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so all you're going to do and you can batch make these because they are the simplest thing in the world to do is just And I would just chain, chain stitch. But they also make lovely gifts as well. We are um, getting some more of the sandalwood buckwheat in and the Christmas scent buckwheat in as well. 
So you could also do some of these to put in for, um, you know, when people open a Christmas present, they would smell pretty amazing there. Um, I would just spin around and go down the other side. So when I say that these are easy, I wanted to do an, an easy show because it's very easy for us to go, oh yeah, no, you can do this, this, and this, and this, and this. But some days we just don't have all that much time, but we still want to be productive. We still want to make something. Or maybe we want to do something with the grandkids or whatever it is. Just snip those threads. That's absolutely fine. You can, you know, be really tidy about it or not. It's entirely up to you. What have I just done? I've just done them all around the wrong way, haven't I? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll do them with screw. Do them the other way around. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't listen to me this morning. Honestly, I don't know where my head's at. Um, here we go. We'll do one out of the squirrely girl one, which I'm going to use in a minute. No, it's even easier than I've just shown you. Don't put them right sides together. My head's on another project. Down one side. And across. And across again. Because you're not going to turn it through. That is the whole point, is that they are even easier. <laughs> They're even easier, and yet possibly the easiest thing that we make, and yet still I can manage to mess it up. So you've basically created yourself a tiny little pouch, and then, and it is just a teaspoon amount in there. of lavender. I batch make these with my mum and she gets the job of stuffing and then you just go along the top. If you want to pop a ribbon in, pop a ribbon in before you, before you stitch down. Lavender ravioli. I mean how ridiculously easy is that? Even with a mistake it's done quicker than quickity quick. I'm going to unpick those ones and do them later. There we go. Quick job done. Right, okay, so what else are we going to do then with these, um, with these two and a half inch squares? We've got, we've got them in the lovely, um, in the little duckling. If you want something a little bit more grown up, we've got them in the mode of daybreak. We've got the squirrely girl, which is really lovely. And I've got one, just one left of the Solana, which, um, look at all those gorgeous colours. Beautiful. So that's all we've got left. Quilter's grid for me is always going to be your friend when it comes down to anything like this. And um, we had a question the other day about, well, do they not do it in two and a half inch grids? No, they don't. You just got to count. And um, what I'm looking for is just pop that under there so that you can see. So it is a two inch grid, but just use that as your guide. That's what it's there for. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. So we're going to have a look at doing just a quilted PU bag. Um, super, super simple and easy. This is your, your squirrely girl fabric. I rather like it. It's got squirrels with acorns on their head and it's got little pumpkin pies and things. So it's quite a sweet one. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five along. And so you see what I've done is I've used that line as my guide. And then one there. And so this will be my guide for here. Um, just a little what's it in there. I seem to be waging war on my own hands at the moment. Honestly, I cut myself there, squashed my hand um, the other day, and then um, yesterday had an argument with Naughty Morty about the rights and wrongs of trying to squash himself under the DPD van. I said no. He said he really wanted to. Oh, scratch. And um, it's a bit sore. It keeps catching on everything. You know, when you've got a really busy week and the last thing that you need is actually something hurting every time you touch it. Yeah, that. Oh, look at that one. Pop 
spot there. I like that. And then what else? What else? What else should we put in there? Those little acorns there. So we've mixed it up a little bit. Your quilt is good. Make sure you go on the bobbly side. Um, there we go. We've got lots then, haven't we, to use there. And then just take it to your iron. If, if, if you're just going to um, just sort of dab your iron down, then great. If you want to fuse everything fully, 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 then for goodness sakes, put a pressing mat, Teflon pressing mat or something. Let me see, here we go, here's mine. Over the top, so that you don't ruin your iron. Um, because, you know, that gets expensive, people. It really does. So I will just do that over here and just press that with my little pressing sheet over the top. And that'll do the job. And whilst I do that, I'll see who, who's got what. Does anybody else's feed keep freezing, saying uh, feed interrupted? We had this yesterday, didn't we? Um, our system was having a little moment this morning and was hiding new products. Do you know technology is against us at the moment? I don't know why. Never mind. These little squares are so cute. They are, Elizabeth. And the thing is, is that if you don't really like cutting, then it's job's done for you. That's what I really like about them. You don't have to worry. It's all done. It's all done. Um, that's the demo for today then, is it, Tash? Uh, yeah, that's it. That was it. That was lavender ravioli in two seconds, even with an error. That's the one. There we go. That's the beauty of a pressing sheet, isn't it? And then just trim it down. If you can find, haha, where you put the, I still haven't forgiven it for cutting me. Save all these little bits because you will use them. You certainly will use them. That's for sure. So a lot of you will have already had the Quilters Grid because you did go a little bit crazy for it when we first launched it. And it's just something that I come back to again and again. Instead of having to use any kind of interfacing now for um, for this little PU bag, I don't need to because I've already got this on it. And that's great. That's job done as far as I'm concerned. So then, for those of you that have never, never seen it before, and there will be some, you're just going to fold over and stitch a quarter of an inch down there and repeat all the way along. So let's just do that, shall we? Let's simply do that. Now, Elizabeth, we've sort of got um, a smorgasbord of demos for you today. Fold over the next one. And over the next one. And then what you're going to go in with a pair of scissors is along that seam line and just snip that open. You don't have to do it, but it does just make the whole process a little bit nicer because then you'll just press that open and it just makes the seam lie a little bit flatter. There we go, tell you what we'll go. We don't need to see that up close, do we? We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. Yes, we do. But if you ever worry about getting um, matching seams or anything like that, then Quilter's Grid is the way to go because you will get perfect seams without the hassle, without the heartache. And um, it's, an, it's a nice little cheat to keep up your sleeve. Is it cheating though? Is it? It's just a tool for us to use. And I'm all for that. That's for sure.
Right, okay, so then we are going to press these open. And if you want to finger press them first, then do. It's up to you. I'm just going to take these to the pressing mat and just do that very quickly now. Here we go. At least your evil elf is small. I don't know whose evil elf that is. So if who's the evil elf? You're going to have to catch me up. Or I'm going to have to watch all of these. Oh, 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 oh. What else? What else? What else? Yeah. Honestly, Shopify this morning was not happy. Jim was like, I'm pretty sure I did not add a red flanged border onto today's show binding rather on today's show I'm like yes i don't know quite where that would actually sit on today's show she's like no me neither but uh that's what our system was adamant that we wanted to show you today we don't we don't at all and now all we're going to do is fold it that way and stitch across simple right let's do that I've I prepped one side and I just had a horrible thought. I was like, did I, did I do that on the other one? So, um, yeah, make sure you do it right sides together. This is it, isn't it? I've confused myself now because the lavender ravioli was wrong sides together, not right sides together. Now I'm doubting myself. Never doubt yourself. That lavender smells amazing, by the way. If you are a lavender fan, um, it was, I didn't realize just how many different types of lavender there were. Or that actually Yorkshire is a really good place for lavender. Who knew? For like a really nice scented one. I've just flipped that over. I'm not sure if I can flip it back. There we go, done. Okay, so then back to here, back to snipping. And that's your prep pretty much done on this. That's, and I'll show you what you're left with because it is quite impressive. I always love quarters grid and I love qu showing quarters grid to people who have never seen it before. They're like, that's amazing. I know. I know. We all need these little things because, you know, we're not all Jane when it comes to sewing who just does these things beautifully. Um, there is a reason that they just call me bash it tash. And I'm like, all right, that's they're like, yeah, but it's just bish bash bosh, isn't it? You get stuff done. I'm like, yeah, but it won't be perfect but it does get done. So this helps me be old bish bash bosh tash. Um, and I'm comfortable with that, you know. I've got a lot of shows to do. Lots of stuff to make. There we go, righty home. So then again, just pressing those open and we're all good. Now, you can do a fabric base for these. Absolutely, you can. Um, I would interface the bottom part, uh, the contrast bottom part, uh, so that you've matched kind of the, just the, the texture and consistency of it. That's what I would do. So I would put a medium weight interfacing. Um, but, 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 because, I was thinking baby rooms and things like that when I was doing it. I would do it. I did this initially with a PU base because then I thought it can be a wash bag. So let me show you, first of all, that we have got perfect points. Look at those perfect points. Perfect. Happy days. We like that. I've already cut my PU. Look, I've gone all, gone all gold on you. Let's flip that up there and just stitch along. You're not going to need any fancy schmancy anything for this other than the clips out of the hippo's mouth uh, because, 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 God, 
a little bit short, never mind. Um, you're not at this point stitching on the on the that side. Alright, so we're just going to stitch along there. Just double check, got it the right way up. Because as much as squirrels are quite acrobatic little creatures, you see, look, I, have, I haven't had to put a special foot on or anything like that. If you have trouble with PU, get yourself some tissue paper, baking paper, anything like that. Just pop it in between. Now, I tend to stitch that seam down one side or the other. Just see where it lies naturally. Um, if you feel that it lies to the PU side, then, you know, maybe you want to do that. If you do, you might want to just increase your stitch length a little bit. Um, and obviously don't press it, you can finger press it, but don't, but don't do that. So, you see, my machine is absolutely fine with PU. It's no bother at all. If yours dislikes it, flip the seam and just stitch it. Pop a bit of tissue paper over the top of your PU and just stitch it on the other side. But that's just going to hold that seam down in place. Okay. If you want to, and you want to do yourself um, a little tab or anything like that, just on the side, then you can do you can do one where you take it into the middle like that. Not really going to bother today, but you can if you want. And that's actually, did I make one earlier? No, I did make one earlier. So you can always pop in a little thing like that, and you just stitch that in place there. That might it's a bit chunky actually. That one I'm not going to bother with it. Um, but that that is it. And then we get on to the zip. So I've done sort of started one side and um, I'm now going to change. Actually, do I need to change my foot? I might get away with it. I've used a size five zip. You know our, our new swanky swanky zips? I've used a size five, which means that often we can just get away with it a little bit more in terms of what foot you use to stitch because I like to make a feature of the zip. Now, again, what I've done, because this is a cut off the roll zip, I've cut it, you can just see, a little bit longer, which means that then my zip pull is just hanging off so that I can stitch off the end and it not be a problem. Now, then you see the zip becomes slightly more of a feature. What I will just do is just press that back fabric down and then we'll stitch, top stitch along, um, just to hold it out of the way so that the teeth never get in the way. There's nothing worse. We've all had that anorak or something where the teeth got caught in the zip. It's just a nightmare. Teeth got caught in the zip, you know what I mean. Stuff got caught in the zip and it was not a happy experience for anybody, for anybody, anybody. Um, for those of you going for the squirrely girl, a half meter of your paprika, Street. The PU is on the website as well and all we're going to do is just stitch down so that it just holds everything um, away away from the teeth. And if you need to just you know hold hold them there to make sure that everything is held out of the way. Now, a lot of people will do it super, super, super close. But to be honest, as long as it's gone through to your lining, it doesn't have to go through the zip tape as well. It just needs to be that that will hold away. And you can see that's one side pretty much done. And we'll just repeat that to the other side. So we get our zip sandwich. And again, don't just don't be worried about this because this was what I... Oh, I didn't make pouches for so long because of zips. I was just so scared of zips. It's ridiculous. When I look back, now that I've done a lot of zips, 
And Alistair from House of Alistair, he said, I remember having this conversation with him. He's like, are you kidding me? He said, I was so scared of zips that I thought the only way to conquer my fear was he made a jacket entirely out of zips. He had to stitch in over 50 zips. And um, just like that got me over my fear. And um, when the pandemic hit and um, the head teacher at my son's school um, decided that every child should have their own pencil case yeah she came knocking on my door for those and I odor coated them so they could all be all be washed in between in between sessions they could all be wiped down and um <coughs> yeah 50 odd pencil cases later I was well over my fear of zips and through quite a lot of wash away quilters tape as well if I'm honest, and every single one was different. So you can imagine I properly raided my scrap box for that. And it's really sweet, they still use them. So I should hope. So I should hope. There we go. And yeah, just check that you get that around the right way. There's only an inch difference in the lining, by the way. So just make sure. Oh, I've gone all husky. Oh, oh. There we go. So you just, everything is going to be right sides together with your zip in the middle and that's your zip sandwich. But it's just, if you don't do it often, just keep double checking yourself. There's nothing wrong in that. Really nothing wrong in double checking yourself at all. And again, if I was using a smaller zip, if I was using a three or something like that, I would be putting my zip foot on. So just a little bit of laziness on my part this morning. Um, so just bear with me. Right, let's just press that and then we'll top stitch that. And that's, that's the outer kind of bit done. We're then onto the construction, which is great. But the other thing just to bear in mind, because um, I've done that as well, is don't, don't let the, the other lining piece slip to one side so that when you stitch everything down, you end up stitching everything down to one side. Doesn't go well, does not go well. And just be careful how much heat you apply if you've got a plastic zip. All these little things, you know, just just to be just to take care of we'll just stitch down there and then we're all good and this is a basic pouch construction there is nothing tricky in this nothing to um nothing to tax or anything like that but it does just mean that you've maybe tried a new skill tried a new texture with the uh with the quilters grid or maybe 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 you don't even want to put the PU on the bottom maybe you're just going to do a nice little patch pouch not wrong with that either to be fair and so then it's just down to a basics construction really really super simple um, you are going to flip that over to there and that over to there the thing that I would say is we are going to box the bottom. So you can either cut your squares out now or stitch and then cut it out. I know what you're all shouting. Open the zip. Open the zip. Yes. Yes, I shall. Um, I am going to stitch along the base there and then stitch down both sides. I'm going to leave half of this base open anyway um, to turn through. So it just, it means that stuff doesn't get bunched. And when the zip folds, fold the zip into, into the lining. That's the other thing. So they're just little pointers that just help, I think. And if you want to, when you're stitching through your PU, if you want to elongate your stitch length, 
you can. I haven't bothered. I'm still on about a 1.8, but if you want to go up to a 2, 2.2, then do. There's no problem with that. And then match everything up. Just kind of bear in mind that here it's going to look really nice if you do just match those sides. And if you want to clip that to make sure that that's going to happen, then you do that. But then away you go. If you want to use a walking foot on this as well, then you can. And again, this is all going to be determined by your machine. This is a Juki, it's a little bit of a beast. I absolutely love it. But you might have, you know, sort of like an entry level, and that's also absolutely fine. I'm going to trim that bit off there. We all start somewhere. When I first started, I had my grandmother's, oh God, how old is it? Must be about 60 years now. 60 year old singer. I still bring it out. In fact, anybody that watches regularly will know that I still, over the zip we go, uh, will bring that out sometimes for shows just to show that actually we do stitch with everything. And I try and also make sure that the patterns you can use with any machine. That's the other thing. So that's why I sometimes bring out my very, very old singer. And again, I'm just going to check there. Yeah, that, that'll work. Yeah, there's a bit of a lump there. And let's just trim back. If I didn't have the edge on this foot, it's a quarter of an inch with an edge on it, then I probably wouldn't be bothering to trim the zip yet. It's only that it's just got that little edge on it. So that's that's the only reason. And again, I haven't quite trimmed it enough, so it's just going to have a little, little hissy fit at me. That's absolutely fine. As I go over there, it's just going, what are you doing? There we go. I should have changed the foot. It's pure laziness on my part. I think sometimes I get spoiled because this machine is a beast and it, it always does what I want it to do. I do get a little bit spoiled and push it to its extremes. It shouldn't really have to do this. Right, I'm going to go along part way and leave that turning through gap. And then we're going to box those corners, okay? What do I mean by that? What is this boxing of corners that we speak of? So all the box corner is, um, is to give it volume, give it some good size. Now, what have I done with my pens and my rulers? That's what I need. Um, I tend to, let's have a look at this, including the seam allowance, just mark off an inch. Now, Various people have various theories about this because what you can do is bring out all the scissors today, um, cut it, and then just use that as your template. Like that's the really lazy, easy way to do it. And then you're not getting heads up and making sure that you've cut it right off everything, blah, 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 blah. Um, but just use those bits as your template. And then you know that you're going to be the same, right? Easy. Easy peasy. And then all we're going to do is pull it apart so that those seams now nest like that. One can go one way, one can go the other. That lies flat and we stitch a quarter of an inch across there. And we're going to do that on every single corner. And I'm going to delve under the desk and get my foot back. So again, from a square, pull it apart. 
you can. Come on. Now, those of you that have got the pocketed zip pouch, if you've got a choice there to either box or not, if, again, this comes down to your machine, and the only reason I mentioned this was somebody the other day said that they were struggling with their machine to go through all of the layers of PU. There, is quite, there are quite a lot of layers with it. If you know that your machine is, is you know, not going to be a lover of, of lots of layers, then with the pocketed zip pouch, what I would say is don't double up your layers of PU on the pocket. Just do one. Just fold over the top, have it as a hem, and just do it that way. And that will save you any of that bother. Still looks great, less bulk. So just aligning those seams, one going one way, one going the other, if you can. Don't worry about it if you can't. There you go. And then that turning through gap. Yes. And the fact that we left the zip open. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes should all now be working in our favour. That's what we're after, isn't it? Push out, and you can just see how that seam goes all the way around because we nested it. Looks really smart, yep. Pretty much there with that. If I'd have put in the tab, then that would have been there just to pull the zip across. You can then, of course, stitch, slip stitch if you want to hand stitch um, across there. Do you know what, and I say this a lot, I don't always bother. And what I will do instead is just pop an iron on that seam and then I will just very, very quickly stitch along it. Just because otherwise I end up with a mountain of stuff that just needs a little bit of hand stitching to finish off. Does it happen? Does it eh? So um, this way at least I know it's done. And it's going to be inside, so no one's going to notice anyway. Or if they do, you know, like, so what? So that is your quilted PU wash bag. That's it. Done. Stuff it with whatever you like in there. That's it, there you go. Um, so that is <laughs> two demos down, two demos down, one more to go. All right. And if you, yeah, you know, that will stand up, but if you want to, then you can add H640 or anything if you want it really like super, super, super sturdy. But that, yeah, that will, that will stand up and you can pop all sorts of goodies in. I know that Captain Small will think it is her birthday once again when I get home. There we go. All right, what should we do now? Oh, the Pay It Forward project. Yeah, we'd better do that, hadn't we? Um, we were just deciding on next month's Pay It Forward project. Jem, did we decide on that in the end? There's a delay. She'll get back to me in a minute. Um, if we don't decide on it today, did we decide on it? Final decision after the show and then pop it live on Friday. Friday show, that's the one. There we go. This month, um, this month is this. Okay. Um, and you get your stuff in. For those of you that have already got it, there are more loaders on the website if you want to go for it. But um, and you notice it's pink, this one. Lovely. For those that have mastectomies, lumpectomies actually just to have that little bit of respite that little bit of oh, isn't all very important so this is what we're making you will have two lo uh, two different fabrics the one I'm going to make um, is 
it, it's a little special one. It's for a friend, so um, it, yeah. Uh, so she chose her fabric. So you have to bear with me because I'm not demoing in the fabrics that you will have, um, just because, you know, she can have whatever she wants, quite frankly. Um, so I'm going to do a cave one. Uh, and that, you know, this project was was quite quite dear to me. So um, let's do this, shall we? So you will have your fat quarters. And actually, a, a few of you that who have already got going with this have uh, messaged and said, I can make two out of it. You might have to piece the fabric, um, and it might be that you end up with a seam down there. Uh, or, you know, maybe you've managed some very clever jiggery pokery. I don't know, but 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 yeah you see because that'll be that'll be there we'll get another one um, out there so you will have your template if you haven't got your template I think a couple got sent out in error without a template being added that's totally on me because um, I gave them to Gainer to pack and completely forgot to give her the template go me uh, just message and we'll get them sent out to you ASAP ASAP. So you will have this two tone. This one today isn't going to be. Uh, but I quite like them two tone. And you'll notice you've got to do this on a fold. All right. Now, if you go ahead and make more of these, which of course you absolutely can, then just make sure that you're always on the fold let's do this on this way here so you're going to want a front and a back I mean this is our pay it forward project so for those of you who are going pay it what what is she talking about our pay it forward projects um, were inspired by you lot Absolutely no doubt about that. What we noticed was that during the shows, beautiful things were happening. And we'd, we'd had some shows and um, some of you were making projects for your favorite charity or whatever it was. There was all sorts going on. And um, it was Ali and Lo actually started off some of it. And Ali was making some something for a dog charity. And Lo's like, well, I haven't done my random act of kindness today, so I'll put in for that and this and that and the other and before you know it um, what we had see that's got your seam allowance added in there by the way um, was just a really a really beautiful situation whereby you guys were being amazing and supporting each other so we just thought Do you know what there's something in this we should be doing something like this each month so the pay it forward project is the criteria is you get the f you get a free pack this isn't a money making thing for us let's just make this really clear um you know we kind of cover our costs and that's about it um and um but it means that you will get the pattern you'll get the fabric you can make the project and they will always be nice and easy so if you want to make them with the grandkids or your kids or whatever then you absolutely can. And I'm going to need two of those. Um, and then the idea is that you then give it to someone or someone who someone is going to do well from it. Okay. And that's that's the idea. Um, is that someone who didn't expect to does all right out of this. I'm going to press that crease. I can feel there's a crease in the back there. I'm going to press that out. Um, and that's that's the idea of it. So even if, because we did wipes and stuff for, uh, bibs and wipes for um, women who were having a tough time, but it didn't need to just be women who were having a tough time. You know, we, we sort of honed in on that because we knew that after the pandemic there were, you know, women who were, well, exactly that, having a tough time. And, um, and to leave with nothing is, is hard. So, you know, we've done that. And some of you have sent us the most beautiful things to pass on. So if you don't know of anywhere, that's absolutely fine too. Send it to us. We will, par you know, we will pass it on. 
And then also we did the neonatal blankets. They were incredibly easy. And I think you could get like four quilts out of the kits that we sent you. And thank you for those people who sent them in. And what we're noticing is that those of you that are sending them in are sending them in with extras. And, and that's really gorgeous too. You don't have to do that, by the way. I think, you know, for some people who have been sewing always and you just love to sew, by the time that everyone in your life has a quilt and a whatnot, so who do we make for now as well? And um, so we, you know, this is this has been the thing. With the first one with the baby wipes, we're like, do you know, it doesn't have to be women's refuge. It could also be maybe there's a really ridiculously busy mum on your street and she just looks like she could use a treat um, and something really beautiful then give it to her. Or if that means that you've spent your time, sorry, doing this completely off the camera there. Um, if you've done this and spent your time with your grandkids and taught them how to sew, then that, that fulfills the criteria too, okay? And if you, I will tell you now, anybody that sends these in, these heart cushions, post-op heart cushions, if you send them in to us, if you don't know um, a unit near you, then just send them in to us, that's absolutely fine. Well, that almost looks like boobs, doesn't it? Amazing. Um, and we will take them to, and I'll tell you exactly which one we'll take them to. We'll take them down to the Brighton one, um, because they do, I'm sure they all do an amazing job, but I know, I know Brighton does an incredible job. So. They have an amazing um, breast cancer unit there. So we will, we will support. And, you know, women get given these from these units. You know, let's, let's be really clear on this. You know, this is stuff that is given. Um, and my friend said that she was incredibly grateful for hers when she was given one. So just pin just to hold it and it does make the difference and that's what this is about just a feel good factor that we've had a nice time we've sewn we've done something nice for somebody else and all is well with the world and that's all it need be now I'm going to leave a gap there um, to stuff and to turn through. Remind me, right, that that's what I've done because you know what I'm like, I'll chat and then be like, oh yeah, I better unpick, better unpick. Um, <laughs> but if I start there, hopefully I will remember. Quarter of an inch, that's it, quarter of an inch, heading around. Whoop, let's get those clips out of the way. And off we go. You can go slow and steady. Take your pins out as you go around that curve. There's no rush with these. They do sew up very, very quickly. And you might, you might get overexcited and have leftover fabrics, uh, scraps and whatnot, that actually you might want to make a few more. Oh, just you wait until you see the Pay It Forward project that we've got for Christmas. We love it, we're so excited for it. Um, but we've got November to get through yet. And the idea is for November. Now, what I'm not sure of, see, I keep getting wafts of the lavender, but I don't know if, um, I don't know if, if 
you know, when you're going through this sort of thing, if your sense of smell is altered in any way. I have no idea. And thank goodness I, I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. Lucky me, I don't know. But if any of you do know and can let me know, that would be great. Because otherwise, maybe you want to put a little bit of lavender in there. Just to help relax. You can sew straight off there if you... If the thought of... Um, if the thought of spinning, <laughs> turning on the bottom corner there is a bit too much, then don't. <laughs> Just don't make life difficult for yourself. Um, and again, the reason that I love magnetic pincushion, fabulous. And then we get to turn it through. But before we turn it through, before we get that far, let's just take a moment to snip. Don't snip onto the stitches, but just around any tight little curves. If you've got pinking shears and you want to go in with that, then that's absolutely fine. If you want to just trim that bottom edge off, then you can. You know, if you want to trim all around there, you absolutely can. It's entirely up to you. But honestly, that is it. You just now need to stuff it. And um, that's it done. When you turn it through, by the way, go to the furthest corner and take that bit through first. Just makes turning through anything much, much easier if you just go to the furthest corner. I don't know why I never twigged that, but I didn't. <laughs> and then all you need to do is stuff it and sew it up. And that's it. Like I say, you can send it back to Makes HQ, no problem at all. And we will send that across. But yeah, that'll be that. I will hand stitch that shut. Um, but yeah, stuff it. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. And you'll end up with that. All right. That's it, guys. That is everything. My system has crashed completely, so I can't change any camera angle, so I'm just going to let you look at that for a little bit longer. Oh, no, there we go. Back again. Uh, so, yeah, just, just stuff. Let me know, because I know that this is how much um, Gemma and Jane made this, that they had left over stuffing-wise. And, again, stuff your furthest points first. Um, but just let me know if you can get two um, out of it. The, the general feeling was you very well possibly could. Um, and I could be about to find out. But just, just take, bear that in mind when you're stuffing that you might. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to stuff this and sew it up. Jane is here tomorrow with oh, the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quilt. It's not a big one tomorrow, um, but it is beautifully formed, absolutely beautifully. And I could see Jane, she was absolutely beaming. I'm like, you're really pleased with that, aren't you? She's like, yeah, it's just come together exactly how I want it. And it's um, made with Christopher Wilson Tate fabrics. Just gorgeous. So if you love your blues and your mustards and the fabric is gorgeous, um, then do tune in tomorrow for our Stitchy Witchy Wednesday. Although be careful, because if you type it into Facebook, it didn't like it, we've discovered. Well, John Cole Morgan has discovered. So, uh, yeah. All righty then, you take care, and I will see you here tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Take care, have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye-bye.